This has been a very, very requested video. It's going to be quite hard for me to make because i got to try to remember everything and make sure that everything is, you know, uh, what's that word? I don't remember. Make sure everything, um, you know, is, uh, God, I can't see it. How am I supposed to make this video when I don't even know this fucking word? i got to make sure everything has to do with the video and I don't go off topic, I guess. Uh, Everything is on topic. Oh, you guys probably know what I'm talking about, and I don't know the fucking word. Anyway, the video is going to be why I moved to New Zealand. What brought me here? Oh, my hair's all fucked. Um, so let's see. In El Paso, I met this guy after my second husband and I split up. This guy's name was JD, and he was just a friend. And I didn't really like him as anything else. He didn't really like me as anything else. He had a girlfriend. I had a boyfriend. And one day, the guy that I was with, I caught him trying to cheat on me. Um, his name was Oscar. And um, I, I had a computer at my house, and he was using the computer, and he forgot to log out. And I went to go log him out to log myself in, and I saw a message window open between him and some girl, and he was saying that, it was his birthday and his girlfriend wouldn't have sex with him and blah 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 and he was trying to get her to fuck him and she's like oh I'd fuck you and this and that and I turned to him and I said you're you're in my house eating my food well I'm going to work every night and you're staying at my house and you're eating me out of house and home you stole my car you did all this shit and you're here trying to fuck somebody else right in my house I can't believe it and he got pissed off at me and he threw me on the bed and he started choking me. I have bruises all up and down my arms and my legs and I had finger marks on my neck. And I had friends over and none of my friends did anything. They didn't. I think one girl came and she was like, hey, stop. But there was guys there and they just like stood there and didn't do anything. And I had to go on light duty at work. I couldn't turn my neck. I, you know, I was just so fucked. And um, it was a really hard time for me. And JD was there for me. And him and his girlfriend weren't doing so good. And after he was there for me, he was a security guard. He wasn't goth. He was an alternative he was kind of like a person in power, I guess, like a, I mean, he wasn't a cop, he was a security guard, but seeing him in the uniform and having him be there for me, and he was like this tall, big guy, I just, I wanted to feel protected, and I felt protected with him, and he liked me, and by then I started liking him, it wasn't physical or anything, it was just because it was a feeling of somebody looking out for me, and, um, I decided to be a bitch, and I was like, you know what, I've had girls know that I'm in a relationship where I'm married, and that hasn't stopped them from fucking around with my husband. I'm going to be that girl. For the first time in my life, I'm going to hit on a guy in a relationship, and I don't care. <coughs> and it was dicky to do, but I did. And his girlfriend found out that we were together, and she didn't give a shit. She, like, gave him to me. She's like, if you want him, you can have him. Take him. I don't care. And that should have been a warning sign to me, but it wasn't. And so he and I started dating. He moved in with me, like, right then and quit his job. As soon as he moved in with me, he quit. And he said that there wasn't enough money um, for gas for both of us to go to work, even though there totally would have been. He just wanted to live off of me, and he did. And he smoked like a fucking chimney. Worse than that, he went through so many cigarettes. I had to start borrowing money from my dad just to pay for his habit. And then try to work and work and work and pay it back. And I had one last income tax check with my second husband. Because we were in the middle of a divorce. And before the divorce went through, we had one more joint income tax. And with my half of that money, we decided to move to Florida. <coughs> because um, with my first husband, we lived in Florida. And I had some good memories there. And he was, even though he was physically abusive. He was a good husband. He didn't cheat on me. Uh, he worked. He took care of Dorian, things like that. Um, there was a lot of abuse there, but I also instigated a lot of it. It was just a physically abusive, bad situation.
Um, but after we split up, I kept going back to, oh, I should, I, I want him back, I want him back, I want a guy like that, and I was clinging on to the memories of when I actually had a good relationship, and I'm the kind of person, I don't know if it's my BPD or what, but I forget about the bad stuff when it's not relevant, when I'm not in the situation anymore, I forget everything that was bad, and I only remember all the good stuff, and that's really bad, and I'd forgotten about all the bad stuff, and I just focused on the good, and I beat myself up about leaving him, and all this junk, and I thought, you know, kind of going to Florida would bring me a little bit closer to him, and even though he wasn't living there, it was it was closer to our life, and I even was going to have JD work where my first husband used to work because I knew it was like a factory, and they usually took people, and the pay was slightly higher than minimum wage, and I thought, you know, we can make a life there, a new start, and <clears throat> it was better that than use income tax to pay off outstanding bills and then still struggle. And so we got a U-Haul, drove down there, only to find that the the factory was closed, no longer existed, and uh, the website was still up, so I thought it was there, and we were kind of stuck. So we ended up going to Georgia with the last bit of our money and staying with his grandparents. His grandparents fucking hated me, and they only hated me because of the way I looked. Um, his grandpa was like, you don't come down to South Georgia looking like that. We're not a big city like El Paso. You don't come here with your makeup and your piercings and tattoos. And we don't, we don't like that here. And it, I don't want people looking at me like I'm some weirdo because you don't know how to be normal. Go back to the big city not out here in Georgia. And it's like, oh my God. You know, I would cook for them, I would clean for them, I would do their laundry for them, every day I would wake up and I was like a living maid for them, and they never appreciated it, ever, and he and I ended up splitting up, he, he broke up with me, and I was happy because I didn't want to be with him anymore, <coughs> and um, so we split up, and he expected me to kind of hang around and wait for him and run back to him, even though I was waiting for an out, I was waiting for a way for us to break up. And um, I'm not going to go into exactly how bad he was, but he was pretty bad in a lot of different ways. Um, and I'm not talking abuse or cheating. I'm talking some really taboo, fucked up, kind of, ew, kind of ways. And I was online. We'd have to go to the library. And I was online talking to this girl, Jackie, that I knew from El Paso. And when I was with my second husband, Jackie and her ex-Angel used to go to Club 101, and they'd look at us, you know, sitting there and all dressed up, and she and he both told me that they actually were inspired by us, and they learned everything they knew about the style and how to dance and how to look and all that from us. Like, we were, like, the elder goths, and, like, everybody looked up to us. We were, like, total VIP, got in everywhere, didn't pay for anything. Rock star life is the kind of life we lived in El Paso, we got to see lots of bands, never paid for anything, I was asked to go on tour with OzFest, like, all kinds of shit, and, I mean, that was the lifestyle we had, this rock and roll celebrity life, uh, it's been really hard for me to let go of, and so, she, yeah, she, she learned everything from us, and so did he, and they had a kid together named him Dorian, which is my son's name, and, um, she, and Angel split up, and she was talking to me, she kept telling me, Angel really likes you, Angel really likes you, you should hook up with him, and blah, 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 and I looked at his pictures, and I was like, oh, he's kind of gothy, he looks like my second husband, who I was still really in love with. He, I thought he was like my soulmate. I actually have a video here about him, but it's private because after making my CJ videos, I kind of didn't want to have another X video, and so I've made it private, and I don't know if, if I make it public now if it'll even be able to be seen, so I kind of have just left it. Well, anyway, I thought he was like my soulmate. He was everything to me, and so he definitely affected me in a really big way. Not a good way, but a big way. And Angel kind of looked like him, and he loved 80s, he loved a lot of stuff, and we got along really good, and he asked me to be his girlfriend. 
And I said, yes. And we were in Georgia and he was in El Paso, but I was going to move back home. So it wasn't a big deal to me. And JD found out I was with him, got super pissed off, really fucking furious. And I told him I wanted to move back home. He decided to come with me because I'm directionally retarded. I couldn't follow a map if it was fucking glued to my eyeballs. And um, he drove the U-Haul back and we talked and talked a lot and we agreed to stay friends and I meant it, you know, I, he's not from El Paso. So I was more than happy to have us all rooming together and stay friends with him. I wouldn't have just abandoned him and left him like that. And he thinks that I would have. And, um, so we get there and I, I meet Angel in person, like for the first time. And I was just like, Oh my God, you were super hot. And I ran over to him and we hugged each other and it was like, Oh, this is so cool. And, um, I told JD, stay at the hotel. I'll be right back. I'm going to go and, you know, spend a little bit of time with him and we're going to talk some things out like about living situations and stuff. And then, um, I'll come back and get you and then we'll go drink together because we're all going to just like hang out and drink and get to know each other. And he said, okay. And I left, went to Angel's house. Angel was living with this girl, Mo and with Jackie. And it was kind of odd that he was living with his ex, but you know, she hooked us up. So I didn't really think too much of it. And, um, I spent the night there. I ended up not going back, uh, cause it was just really late. It was late by the time we had driven back and all that stuff. And then I went to the hotel the next day and my U-Haul was gone and JD was gone. And it turns out that he had taken off right after we left with the U-Haul and everything I owned, including my ferret and, um, made off with everything. And it wasn't until a couple of days later that they found the U-Haul abandoned somewhere and half my shit was missing and what was left was egged. He had taken all my eggs because I brought food with me and threw eggs all over everything. Um, my best CDs, books, a book I was writing, pictures, my ferret, everything was gone. And I don't know what he did with them all, but I've lost most everything I owned. Ended up having to stay there with Jackie and Mo and Angel. I was... I was pretty in love with Angel. Uh, we had had an excellent relationship to start with online, or not online, um, on the phone. I would call him like every single night whenever JD would go to bed or go to work. I would call, you know, stay up all night talking to Angel. And I remember he had asked me to carve his name in my arm. I forgot where it was. I think it's over here somewhere. Or maybe it's here. I don't know, but he had asked me to cut his name in my arm <coughs> to prove I loved him. And I wasn't against cutting myself, so I did it. And then later on, he told everybody that I was crazy, and I was psycho, and I cut myself. And I was like, you told me to, and you said that you do the same thing for me. And then after I did it and told him about it, he actually wrote a song called Cut Me Inside that he told me he wrote for me. And I, I was in love with the song. He was in a band called Creepy Old Ladies. And they were actually a pretty good band, um, very old school, gothy. And I was a huge supporter, you know. Uh, and I remember... Yeah, because he, we had so much in common and he, he was gorgeous and he treated me okay. <laughs> it wasn't great. Um, I just really wanted to be loved, I guess. And, um, I've always wanted an alternative gothy looking guy and I haven't been with many. My second husband and Angel and kind of Oscar and when I first got with Logan are about the only alternative guys I've ever been with. Um, the rest have just been normal or metalheads and that kind of has sucked for me because I'm really attracted to gothy guys and goth guys don't like me. So I don't know. And, um, Angel and I would go to sleep at night and he would wake up in the middle of the night and he would go downstairs and sleep in between Jackie and Mo with his kid. And he'd leave me in bed by myself. So that kind of really sucked. And I always felt really left out, but he said it was because he wanted to spend time with his son and his son was sleeping with his mom and Jackie was a real big bitch too like I felt really bad for little Dorian because she always denied that she had a kid she was like oh it made me fat oh I'm not a mom don't tell people that I have a kid like she was she was a total fucking cunt she actually hated people knowing that she had a kid to the point where her little boy would come up to me and call me mom and he would go up to Mo and call her mom and then later on he would go up to my ex, Jen, who ended up with Angel, and he would call her mom. Like, he, he wanted a mom really bad, and his own mom was there and kept him a dirty little secret. He didn't tell anybody, didn't even want anybody to know she had a baby, and it was just like, that poor kid, you know? But anyway, um, 
and then like Angel would go to band and practice or do whatever and I you know he'd come home and watch his fucking sports shit and I'd sit on the floor at his feet and I'd lay my head on his knee and I just hold on to his leg and just kind of cuddle with him and he'd stroke my hair and that was how we'd spend the night and stuff and you know I I was really into him and um then it turned out Mo was in love with him and she convinced him to dump me because she said that oh he's a Gemini Gemini's are like her she's a Gemini can't be tied down and it's going against his nature he's gonna end up cheating on me and hurting me and so before he does that he needs to just leave me, and he did. Uh, part of the reason he told me was also that, because I lent him a pair of contacts, because he had really bad eyesight, just like me. And when he saw me clearly, he said I was too fat for him, even though I wasn't fat. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he dumped me, but he was still, sorry, he was still living in that house. We all moved from that house to another house, because Mo decided to leave her husband just for whatever and um she had like two or three kids with him and she left and so she left him the house and she moved us all to another place didn't want me there said that I had a bad aura bad vibes and was trying to leave me homeless and I begged and pleaded please don't I have nowhere to go my dad won't let me stay with him I didn't find out till later he knew he had cancer and he didn't want anybody else to know and so he had shut himself off but he said I couldn't stay with him and I had nowhere else to go and I had my son with me as well. <coughs> so, um, Angel used to fuck with me quite a bit. Uh, he'd come in and he'd hug me or he'd stroke my face or he'd kiss me or he'd try to fuck me. And he'd say, you know, I really miss you. And I'm like, oh, I love you. And, you know, and then in the same breath, he'd turn around and he'd be like, damn, Jackie, you're fucking sexy. And he'd hit on her in front of my face. And all the girls, I didn't want him around when we were together, like, my ex Jen or this other girl, um, a couple of other girls, he would hit on them in front of my face and I couldn't do or say anything. And it was just, you know, sneaking in my bed and trying to hug me and hold me. And it was just, it was a total mind fuck. And then in this new apartment, Jackie and Mo told me, we are taking the master bedroom. Nobody has any furniture or anything. You're the only one who has stuff. So set up all your stuff. Put your bed up, put your decorations up. I want it to look like a home. And I said, okay. And then the guys, because uh, Giancarlo, which was Angel's band member, he moved in as well as real big, fat fucking asshole. So they stayed in the other bedroom. And something happened and something changed. Maybe it was because I told Mo's ex-husband not to trust Jackie. And they resented me for it because Jackie, everybody loves her. Cause she's tall, skinny long black hair and uh even though she never showered or bathed or flushed the toilet unless like a guy was coming over and she was a massive whore and would fuck anything that moved everybody loved her and she's like really skinny but also really anorexic like oh i'm so fat i'm so fat her waist is like that fucking big and she's just you know she's a bad person all around but she was pretty you know like she was compared to angelina jolie you know something like that um so we were all staying in the master bedroom and Mo's ex-husband seemed like a really nice guy. He was in the military. He was gone. While he was gone, Mo decided, I don't want to be married anymore. I want to be free. I want to be gothic because I've met Angel and Jackie and they're gothic and I like how they are in their lifestyle. So I want to be like them. Oh, and I'm going to get a divorce because I want to whore around basically is what she did. And I didn't think that he really deserved another girl doing that to him. And Jackie, I heard her on the phone with her friends, and she would blatantly tell people, oh, Mo's ex-husband's in love with me. Yeah, he buys me all kinds of stuff. He takes me out for food. I'm just going to use him to see how much shit I can get. And I was like, I can't just stand by and know what I know and not say something. And so I told him. And, of course, she denied it for a glorious week, maybe. They treated her like they treated me, and she was shunned and she was hated, and it was awesome. But then she sweet talked her way out of it, and then the hammer was back on my head. They treated me so shitty that I was not allowed to sit on the furniture. I had to lay on the floor like an animal, and I have pictures of me. If I can find them, I'll put a picture here, a couple pictures where I was laying on the ground. Um, my dad had given me an old computer of his, and I couldn't put it on a table. I had to like lay on the floor.
And then we had certain computer times where I was only allowed to be online at night when everybody else was asleep. I wasn't allowed to come out in the daytime and use it. I couldn't leave the house because every time I left, they'd go through my stuff and they'd steal from me. And without leaving the house, I had no money. Um, I stripped a little bit and other stuff to get some money to pay the, my part of the rent. Uh, Dorian and I were starving because I couldn't, I couldn't have, I didn't have any bills under my name, so I couldn't register him in school. Not registering him in school, not having proof of address, I couldn't get on welfare. So we had no food. We we'd share a tin, uh, a little can of Parmesan between us for the week. We had absolutely nothing, like nothing at all, eating out of trash cans. And in the end, I had to send him to stay with his dad because I had to trick his dad into taking him and then not let him come back because I couldn't watch Dorian starve and I had nothing and I had no way out. And Dorian got $100 from his grandparents, his dad's parents, for his birthday. And Jackie and Mo were like, oh, we don't have enough money for the rent this month. Can I borrow it? And then I'll give it back. And they took his money from him. They like went behind my back and took it. And then they never gave it back. And he was really devastated because not only did he lose his birthday money, but his dad sold his Xbox and games to buy beer money and shit. So he like lost everything. He lost me for a while. He had no food. He had nothing. And his birthday money and his Xbox were taken from him. And to this day, that still really bothers me. Um, <clears throat> and, um, they'd talk so much shit about me. Like I'd be on webcam cause I was trying to find somebody to live with somewhere to go. Cause I knew they didn't want me there. I had, I had nothing, you know, I had nobody. They piece by piece turned all of my friends against me. I don't know how, I don't know what they said, but I went one day from having friends to the next day, having absolutely nobody, nobody would talk to me. They'd come over and just blow me off or, you know, call me a dog, talk shit. They talk shit about me in Spanish, like right when I'm on webcam, I've broken down and cried so many times they're walking, because I understood enough Spanish to know that they were talking about me and what they were saying, and um, I just felt so hated and unwanted, and I had nothing, I, I had nowhere to go, and I had nobody to turn to, and one guy said he was in love with me, and that he was my friend, and this guy also told me that, because um, I said that if I didn't find anywhere to go, because they had actually kicked me out. They told me I had like a week to leave and they didn't care. They're going to throw my shit outside and they took my stuff. They broke it into pieces and they put it in bags and put it by the front door. And it was just, it was just so much, so much shit I went through with them. I said that if something didn't change by the Monday coming up, I was just going to kill myself. I had nothing left to live for. And he not only took me to Walmart to get razor blades and sleeping pills, but he told me to tell him when I killed myself when I was doing it so that he could come and take pictures of my dead body to show my son. So those were the kind of friends I had. And at that time, yeah, I was just, I had fantasies of killing Jackie and Mo. At this time, Angel and Giancarlo moved out and Jackie moved to the other bedroom and Mo had a boyfriend and she was gone with her boyfriend all the time. He, she was hardly ever there. So it was just me and Jackie and Jackie and all her friends and everybody that hated me now. And then there was this bitch from El Paso that I still hate. And her name is Crystal Raven and she's online. And I thought she was a friend of mine. And she just fucking hated me, and I never knew why, and somebody told me it was because we both had the name Raven. She gave herself the name Raven, and I was given the name Raven, and I've had it a lot longer than she had, and she hated that, and she hated that guys thought I was hot from time to time, which nobody really did, because nobody ever talked to me or told me anything, and she was like the stripper, oh my god, you know, fucking bitch. And I went out drinking one night after Dorian was gone. Mo was gone, Jackie was gone, so I felt safe. Um, this guy invited me out drinking and I was like, fuck it. I really need to get out of the house. And so we went out, got drunk. He tried to fuck me. I didn't fuck him. He told me he was really sorry. Um, he was quite pushy though for a while. Like I got really scared. He was going to rape me. And then he said, well, I was going through a really hard time and he didn't believe that I should have to live like that. And he had an extra room in his house and he'd be more than happy if I moved in with him, me and my son and um, I could get on my feet, look for work, um, whatever, and just feel safe for once. And I was, I was really 
happy. I told them, yeah, I'll do that. I really need to get out of here. I have nowhere to go. They, they, I only have a couple of days left. They're kicking me out. And, um, I was going to do it until he tried to fuck me. And then I changed my mind. And it turned out later that he was Crystal's boyfriend or ex-boyfriend and she had put him up to it. And she had told him to lie to me, offer me a place to live, which there wasn't actually one, get me and my son to pack up, move, and then we'd show up at his house and he'd be like, ha ha ha, no, you can't stay here, and then leave us homeless. Like, for what? Because of a name? She also told him to rape me. She set me up to be raped and for me and my son to be homeless because of a name. So yeah, these are the people that I was dealing with and I was at the end of my shit. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it anymore. I didn't have a single person to turn to. And then one of my enemies online, Ryan, <laughs> uh, started being there for me. He was always really angry and just hated everybody. And <coughs> he was quite mean to me a lot in the past. Um, but at this time he wasn't angry with me anymore. He was understanding he didn't think that I was psycho or weird for wanting to kill these girls and having fantasies of sneaking in Jackie's room in the middle of the night and chopping all her hair off and then fucking cutting her throat and dismembering her in the bathtub. You know, he understood that I was at the end of my shit and he would let me vent to him and he would just let me talk so much shit. And we grew closer and closer and he was the protector I had always looked for. He was the person looking out for me, understanding that kind of person who was there for me. And he offered me a plane ticket to come to New Zealand. And I was like, this is my chance. This is my second chance. I'm ready to kill myself. And here out of nowhere comes this opportunity to go to another country to get away from these people, to get away from all this stuff. Maybe it's a new start for me. Maybe my life will improve. And maybe this is what I need. It's a sign not to kill myself. And so I accepted and I called around again and I found the number for this girl that I'd met in a bar once and I begged her please can I stay with you just for like a month or so until I can get my passport I they're kicking me out I have nowhere to go I have a way out but I I don't have anywhere to go in the meantime and she believed in karma so she said yes even though she didn't want me there and like I cleaned her house every single day I was on my hands and knees I I did everything she had no food. She was a college student, so she ate at school, went out with her friends. So I was starving there. Dorian was still with his dad. I still had nothing, but I had hope for the future. Ryan, well, Ryan's parents and Ryan would send me money for cigarettes sometimes, my storage, because I had to get storage for my stuff, um, plane ticket, my passport. They took care of me completely. Um, I had food occasionally, not often, but... Um, maybe once a week or so they they sprung for like pizza or something um, to stop me from starving and I got my shit together and came here and you know I'm not gonna go into our relationship but at the start it was really good I mean he was completely looking out for me and I had so much hope that New Zealand would be a good place for me it would be better than the place I left behind it would be everything that I wanted and more and when I got here he knew how the people here were and so he didn't want to put me through that and that's where the protection part went a little overboard because instead of letting me see for myself he stopped me from meeting people and getting out of the house and I was in a new country isolated again didn't get out didn't do anything and by the time I got a chance to sneak out and meet people I guess I met the wrong kind of people and they all betrayed me and fucked me over and I got death threats and I got bullied and
I had pretty much the entire um, golf community here turn against me. And he was just like, I told you so. I told you. And I'm like, I know, but there are some things that I needed to learn for myself. And it was the whole me feeling like I was being smothered that pushed me away in the end because I don't like being trapped. I don't like being caged. I don't like being told what to do. And for this to be a new start for me, I needed to get out and actually know the country, meet people, experience the country. And I never got to, I wasn't missing much because like I've said many times, this place has been really bad for me since I've been here. And people are like, if you hate it so much, just leave. Like it's not that fucking easy. It wasn't easy to come here and it damn sure isn't easy to leave. And now I'm married and I love him very much and I don't want to leave him behind. So I'm trapped. Um, I want nothing more than to go home. I mean, so much time's passed. Everybody's kind of grown up and I just want to go home and I never will. But, um, that's the story of how I got here. It was just pushed and pushed and pushed and I had nothing and I had no one and he came out of the blue and he saved me. And, um, so I'll always have a place in my heart for him because he did essentially save my life. Uh, whether I wanted to die since then or not, he did save my life. I was closer than I've ever been probably to killing myself. And um, now we are really good friends and we are in contact all the time. Um, we, you know, he has his life. I have my life. I'm remarried. There's no romantic connection there, but he is still someone that I can trust and who looks out for me. And a lot of people look at it as something dirty because they don't think exes can be friends and they say that I fuck him and I'm still with him and I'm doing this and that. And none of that's true. If I wanted to be with him, I would leave Logan and go back with him. It's not like that. It's just, he's been the only one that I can depend on. He brought me here. He feels responsible for me. So he stays in my life. I have nobody else here. And so I keep him in my life. And that's probably the way it's always going to be as long as I'm here. And, um, we are really close and, that's just the way it is. It doesn't mean there's anything else going on because there isn't. And so I hope that I touched on everything, but that is the story of why I'm here and how I'm stuck here and all that junk. And I hope that was entertaining. Um, quite a bit to tell, but only 30 minutes. It's about an hour and a half short than I thought it was going to be, but, um, I'll see you guys soon. I'm about to lose my fucking voice.